Hello and welcome to the Therian Tutorials. Uh, today we will pick up on the drawing of Watership Down. Last lesson uh, we had drawn some walls as well as some walls of different subtypes including invisible and presumed. And, and to continue using this example we will now draw some uh, area borders for a water as well as a block. And we'll show you how this is done. So this is a more advanced line drawing with Therian. Um, so at the end, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to draw a, the border of an area and then fill that area with whatever you want it to have, chiefly water. And you should also be able to draw some blocks. Okay, so let's straight, uh, let's straight away jump into the Inkscape file. Uh, we'll ship down E, which is still the same file as last lesson. Um, and here, let's zoom in a little bit and look at the area of water that we uh, want to draw. In fact, this should be a line of type invisible. So let's change that quickly. All subtype invisible apply. Yes. Good. Um, okay, and here this should be the line presumed. Let's continue extensions there in set line subtype presumed. Okay, let's now draw something. Let's go to the Bezier curve tool. Um, now, thankfully, in Inkscape, it's disabled snapping. Okay, so we want to draw the horizontal water line first. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to start off the side of the passage off limits, and the area will be clipped to the uh, cave passage anyway, so I can start drawing outside of it, and then it will be clipped properly to it. And then thankfully with Inkscape, I can use control. Uh, if I keep control pressed down and I move my uh, cursor, some way, somehow horizontally, um, it will guide it to be fully horizontal. So let's just do that. Now I'm happy that this is a horizontal line. I'll just click again and make a new node. Okay. And then finally, I can just finish drawing my area um, around basically the sump or the pool area of Watership Down, yeah. knowing that uh, the entire outer region, which I'm highlighting now, is completely uh, clipped during the production of the PDF. Okay, we again go to extensions and Therian, and there we again set the line type. And essentially now we just make it something different from a wall. And in fact, for areas, we want it to be a border. And we don't want any subtypes. We just want to be a plain vanilla border. Let's just click apply. Now the styling will change again, and here it's a, a fairly thin uh, green line here. Okay, now this is good, but um, uh, we will later open this uh, extension, uh, this uh, extended elevation file in text format. And unless we uh, remember <laughs> the coordinates of all the nodes, we won't be able to, and we draw maybe several of these borders, we need a way to differentiate them. The way to do that is to give them a, a unique ID. And well, in order to give them a unique ID, I uh, bring up the object properties tab, control shift O. I go to the title here, it's a line border, but I give it another attribute uh, ID, which is going to be water, but I'll give it one, water one. So I know this is a border that has to be a filled in with water, for instance. I set and save. It's very important to uh, set. Otherwise, um, as soon as you uh, deselect that item and select it again, you'll see that the title is empty. Let me show you, for instance, that I'll make a bogus area here. And uh, for instance, I maybe want to make this a line border with ID water. If I do not click set here, but just uh, deselect it, 
and select it again, there you go, the title's gone. So you really do need to set and save um, before deselecting your area. Now if I select this area again, you can see that it is, it is kept, let's change. And I'll save it. Now the next, next thing we want to do is to draw that um, block, which was seen in the sump pool of the cave. Just make a closed uh, polygon. Okay. And here, same old routine, extensions, therian, set line type. And here, this is not a border. Uh, there's a special rock border type that we can set. We don't want to set any particular options here. So we'll just click apply. Okay. And here again, you can see that the styling is changed as well as, in fact, the fill of this uh, area you can already see here is actually white. Um, so it being a closed off polygon has a fill now. This is not the case for the border. The border is absolutely empty. And so that's it. We've now drawn a border. We've drawn a rock border. Now we can save this. Okay. All right. However, we can close this off. In fact, let's just move to uh, Watership then E. I will close the Inkscape file saved that's fine um, and move on to the text file here and this is important now that we have uh, watership down e.th2 open in text format and in this case all the scraps are the equivalent of the uh, of the layers uh, in that file and we can obviously scroll down a little bit but the main thing is you see this line selected here so see all the uh, nodes of that polygon it has an id water one and that means that i can also um, write and set an area uh, water and area um, and then within that i give it the name of the polygon that i want filled with water water one in fact and then i save this um, this is useful if you have user-defined water or, or types of fills um, for which um, the Ethereum extension might not allow you to choose from a drop-down menu. Um, so for any type of area, you can always use this method of going back to the text file, finding which polygons have been set some IDs, find these IDs, and then just above it, just write a quick... Uh, a quick paragraph. Now, this means that the, the file is still openable in Inkscape afterwards, um, but the styling won't have changed. And above it, we can see that we saved a rock border polygon that we drew. So that's all fine. And then below, all the walls of subtype invisible and presume that were drawn in uh, session 1.2. I will stop this video here and you can uh, find the continuation of the tutorials uh, next time.